G'day folks, thought I'd bring you along and show you a project I'm working on today. It's basically a set of wicking barrels that are all joined together and they're filled up from a reservoir. A uh, mate of mine here on YouTube, Mojo60, he's set up a very similar system where he's using wicking barrels, very similar to ours, as well as some earth um, global bucket, sorry, global bucket style barrels where he's got a bit of a false floor on them and reservoir down the bottom. Um, check out his clip just up in there. He's got a series of them actually of him and his wife uh, putting them together. So check them out. Now to make up these barrels, they're pretty basic. I've done clips on these guys before. Uh, basically you take a 200 litre or a 50 gallon drum. Uh, these are whiskey barrels. Um, chop them in half, basically measuring from top to uh, base of the barrel, drawing a line around it. I use a jigsaw, you could use a saber saw reciprocating saw or a um, grinder if you really wanted to or even a handsaw chop them in half clean around the, all the bird edges with a bit of a sharp blade and yeah there you go you've got your barrel the next thing I did was work out a reservoir system now for these guys I went back to my old donut um, slotted egg pipe style reservoir mainly because I had three laying around from old barrels I decommissioned so I decided to use them what they basically are is a slotted ag pipe. They're a four inch or a hundred mil slotted ag pipe. It's used behind drainage walls or in low spots in yards. Um, as the pipe has slots in it, water falls into those slots and is carried away. I'm using it to hold water in this case. So I've just basically cut off a section, turned it into a bit of a donut shape and held it in place with zip ties. And that's going to sit in the base and be used as the reservoir. One of them, as you can see, is a slotted ag pipe with a sleeve around it. Now that basically stops any sand or grit falling into those little slots and clogging up the pipe. With the ones that aren't sleeved here, I'm going to have to cover them over with some weed mat. I'll be using that as a barrier to stop the sand falling into the pipes. So once I got my barrels cut up and all sorted and the donut reservoirs, all I need to do is connect them in series. So we'll start with a quick explanation on how the barrels are going to be joined together. As you can see, I've got a hole on the barrels, roughly the same height. What I've done is worked out roughly what half the diameter of the pipe is. In this case, it's um, 10, 100 mil or four inches, so I've just halved that. And I've measured up from the base of the ground to the outside of the the barrel and drilled through with a 32 mil hole saw or that's an inch and a quarter because that's what I need for these one inch or 25 mil grommets drilled through the side of the barrel then I've placed this little donut on the inside and I've drew, continued to run the hole saw through the hole uh, to create a hole in here the idea being the grommet will sit through the wall of the barrel and then also just into the side of the donut here so when the barb fitting goes in it will create a bit of a seal there and then the weed cloth will stop any other sand or grit or soil you know clogging this up so that's the rough idea there uh, with these guys it'll differ depending on the sort of reservoir you're going to use but I came up roughly around about 55 mils which is just a fraction over two inches on the other side of this barrel here, because it is the last one in the series, what I've gone and done uh, is drill a hole a lot further up. This one here, I think, I'll just grab the measuring tape. This one here was drilled at about uh, 160 mil or about six and a half inches up. As you can see, there's quite a difference in height between the two holes. The idea behind that is this is the overflow. So the height in the control bucket will regulate the water that goes through the system. What I want it to do is sit the, the high tide mark in the system just below this port here. The reason this port is important is if we have a, a, a downpour, we get some pretty full on thunderstorms here at times. Um, if we get a lot of water dumped at once, I want somewhere for it to evacuate. So the theory is the water will go down through the barrels into the reservoir, raise the level in the reservoir and come out this end barrel here. Um, if I do find that the water isn't travelling through as well as I would like, I can always come back later and zip a few holes in these other barrels a little bit higher up, just to act as a bit of an emergency drain as it were. So I'm not going to worry about it for now though. With this drain, the grommet actually comes in from the inside and I'll show you why. It's because I like to make a little bit of a screen. Um, this little screen just lets the excess water flow through nice and easily uh, without any sand or soil being washed out. Um, it's basically just an off, off cut of uh, shade cloth in this case. You could probably use fly screen as well. Um, all I do is grab my, my fitting that's going through the grommet, fold over the shade cloth, 
wrap it round one way and then the other so it makes a little bit of an S shape as you can see there. I'm just using a recycled zip tie here just to fasten it in place behind the barb on the fitting. There we go. So this now just gets pushed straight through. There we go, like that. And that will be the drain for the whole system. All we need to do now is put a one inch barb fitting through either of the grommets and then connect it with some of the old um, feeder pipe from the aquaponic system and that'll just join the barrels together. I won't do it up here though, it'll make it a bit hard to manhandle so I'll do that down in situ. What we'll have a look at now is the control bucket. That looks a bit sad, we'll make it smiley, hey? This is the bucket here that we'll be using as the control box of sorts. Uh, it'll basically keep the water at a constant level uh, throughout the whole system. This is the little jobby that will be keeping it um, all nice and level. It's a float valve I bought online. Uh, not the best quality. I hopefully will be replacing it with a better quality one soon, uh, but it'll do the job for now. Water comes in through this fitting here. Uh, the float uh, rises and there's a little stopper in there and it stops the water from coming through. What I have to do is just zap a hole through quickly for a grommet. I'm going to use the same 25mm uh, grommet. The threaded fitting here is a 20mm or a 3 quarter inch so I've gone to a 19mm spade bit and I'll use that to make the hole in here. I'll do it about halfway up and that way I've got a bit of leeway with this float. I can adjust it, it to the um, correct height. Roughly around about halfway. So that's through there now and tighten him up and away we go. So to connect this to the reservoir, I'm using a fitting that has a 3 quarter inch or a 20 mil, 19 mil, sorry, uh, threaded fitting on one end and it's got the 16 mil or half inch barb fitting on the other and that pretty much well just threads on there. I will use some plumber's tape and that will allow this just to go up with some pipe. I'm actually going to have a tap on there as well um, into the reservoir itself. Nice and easy. So this is where the system's being set up. We have the reservoir here, the control box and then the three barrels. So I'll bring you over and show you how far we've got. We'll start from this end. We have the overflow barrel. This is the barrel that acts as the drain if uh, we get too much rain. It's connected down there with the pipe onto the straight barb joiners in through the grommets which then go into the rings another one on this side down the base the same assembly into the first one and down here we have a bit hard to see with the shade but we have the pipe going through to our control bucket that has a different float in it um, i did a bit of a dummy run with the white float and it's just not working very well so i've grabbed one of my red floats out of the aquaculture system it's not hooked up to a backup top up at the moment, so I'm pinching this one until I can get a better replacement. And from there we have a little tap assembly that goes into the base of the reservoir and fits into the float valve down there, and I've just got a little tap down there. So that's it pretty much all set up. What I'm going to do now is make sure I have everything level and also adjust that float uh, so it doesn't overflow constantly out the drain hole at the other end. So I'll just pop the lid on here. Turn the tap on down here to give you some idea of what's going to happen. The water's going to come in through there. It's going to slowly fill that up. I'll speed that up with the hose actually. And then it'll slowly fill up all the barrels down the base. Now I'm not putting the sand in them yet because I want to make sure that I have the float valve adjusted correctly uh, before I put the sand in and yeah, it takes too long for the water to run through and make my adjustments. So I just add a bit of water into here. And as you can see, it will slowly start to come through into this barrel here. Imagining though that there would be a sand core in there. And so on until it fills up all the barrels. So I'm just going to leave the hose in here and let it fill. So that water is sitting round about where I want it, just below that drainage port there. It hasn't quite reached it yet. So what I'm going to do now is go up the other end and adjust the float valve so it will sit at this level constantly. So I had to take the red float out and flip the actual float itself, the red bit. I'm just adjusting it. I'll just bring you in for a bit of a look. As you can see, there's water coming through. I've tightened it off a bit and all I'm doing is just pushing it down to a point where water stops dripping out through the inlet just there. There we go, it looks like we've got a very good seal on it there. So all I'm going to do now is take it out and I'll tighten it up with the screwdriver and the pliers and that'll be its permanent position. There we go. 
Yep, no drips. So there's a bit of a look at just setting up this float. Different floats will um, need to be adjusted differently. So this is how I do it for this one. This lid will just sit on here loosely now and I can get on to sorting out the reservoirs. So with this weed mat, what I want to do is have enough cut that it will go up the side of the barrel and prevent any sand from going down the side of the donut. So I've added the weed mat in there now and all I need to do is add the sand just into the center there. That'll drag it down. If I actually raise the level in the other bucket straight away and pop another one in here. So there we go, that's pretty much all the sand I'm adding. You'll probably be able to see just below the surface in a minute. The water will start to wick up through the layers and then into the soil itself. So it does take a little bit of time, but eventually it gets there. Once the reservoirs are full with sand, I like to add in about four inches or 100 mil of um, sugarcane mulch. You could use hay, you could use straw, even dried out lawn clippings could go in there, not fresh ones, they'd compost. Uh, and what that does is serves a few purposes. It separates the sand from the soil. It helps wick moisture up from the sand into the soil mix and it can also provide food for the worms that go into here. For the soil mix that then went in, I used four parts of a good premium uh, potting mix. Um, commercial compost from the same company called 5-in-1. Uh, fantastic compost, we've had great success with that. Also added in one part of our own compost, uh, which had some biochar activating in it for a little while as well. That's stuff we've made on the property using weed trees and horse manure. And under each plant went a nice healthy handful of worm castings, uh, which contain the worms, um, the egg cocoons. After that, it's pretty much all a matter of planting out the plants and putting in a nice thick layer of mulch on top. Uh, we use mulch here uh, mainly because it helps stop the beds from drying out. I know in other places of the world, uh, mulch isn't suggested to put on top of your beds, but it's something we do here. So there you go folks, there's a bit of a look at the auto top up wicking barrel system. Uh, very basic design, very easy build and I think the plants are going to thrive in it. Um, you can check out the plants in upcoming walk around clips, I'll show them as they grow. Uh, don't forget also too to check Mojo 60 system just up in there, you can check it out. Um, he's hooked his up slightly differently and leveled them off differently so might give you a bit of an idea on how you can customise it for your own property and the lay of the land that you have. So I'll pretty much will leave it there. Uh, if you do have any comments, questions or suggestions, leave them in the comments section below and I shall get back to you. Other than that, I hope you have an absolutely fantastic one and I shall catch you next time. Cheers folks!